Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tim Hurley. I'm the chair of the Eastern Historic Commission, along with Vice Chairman. Thank you very little. Along with Vice Chairman John Contresco, and our commission members Amy Spencer, Mickey Wolf, Bob Bishop, Greg Strange, and Perry Harrison, we'd like to welcome you to the 20th annual award ceremony. Uh, any past members? Hazel Varela is here. Past members. Thank you. Thank you, Hazel. Uh, right now, I'd like to hand it over to Fred Ames. Fred's president of the hall. He's got to be somewhere else. So we're going to give him the floor for a few minutes. Thank you. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Okay. Yeah, thank, you, thank you, Tim. Tim is an old friend. Anyway, I just uh, well, good afternoon. And on the behalf of the board of the trustees, I want to welcome you to the Oaks Ames Hall. Um, you know, we're glad to host this again. Uh, this has been, a, I don't know how many years we've done this. And I want to extend the invitation, there's John, to uh, 2020, 20, 2021. So, uh, now the hall, we'll, I'll speak a little of the hall. The hall with the completion of the tower project has completed the restoration of the exterior of the building. Now, this could not have been done without the help of the Easton Historic Preservation Community. And I, by that, I mean most of the people here tonight, excuse me, this afternoon. Uh, I want to give special thanks to the CPC, assisted by the Easton Historic Commission, the Friends of the Oaks Ames Hall, and the Easton Historical Society. We have a, we have a very good uh, community down here for preservation. We're very lucky. Um, we're also indebted to the Massachusetts Historical Commission and our preservation architect, Lynn Spencer, for their help throughout this eight-year, $600,000 project. Now, the last year, there were significant changes at the hall. There were several trustees who retired. They will be missed, and we are grateful for their contribution. The hall can now move in a new direction and make changes to prepare the board for the increased workload ahead required to complete the upcoming $3 million uh, interior restoration. And I know you've heard about that. We're one step closer to getting it started. The plans are now being drawn up with a $125,000 grant, again, generously from the CPC. Uh, so the plan should be ready in the spring. So I urge you to come to the hall, to use the hall, and you know, answer to our, our friends' membership drive. It's, 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 we've really been very successful with the friends. They make a big difference to the things we do. And anyway, it's, it's very good to see so many people here today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Fred. There's always one. Uh, I'd like to recognize a few people who are here today. Uh, State Representative Claire Cronin. Uh, our Select Board Chairman. Select Board Chairman Donnie Fulgenetti. <laughs> President of the Eastern Historical Society Ken Michael. <laughs> and right now, I would, and Mr. David Ames, I believe I saw David Ames come in. Yeah. Welcome, Mr. David Ames. Uh, immediately, before I forget, I would like to thank our sponsor, Bank of Easton. Without Bank of Easton, this doesn't this doesn't happen. So they're. they're they're, it. They're more than just integral. They, they make it happen. Okay, moving right along to the good stuff. I don't even know what the program is. Photography contest winners first. Okay. Uh, are you going to grab the camera or are you? Okay. Okay. Call up our, uh, the Bank of Easton CFO, Richard Gay, and he's just going to say a few words and he's going to help us distribute the uh, certificates of merit to our photography members. A few words indeed, because I have nothing at all prepared. Um, <laughs> but I just want to um, say that the Bank of Easton is, is very pleased and happy to sponsor everything that the um, Town of Easton Historical Commission does here at the town. The Bank of Easton has been we just celebrated 130 years here, and uh, again, we're just happy to sponsor and, and, and support um, everything that the commission does here in town. So thank you.
So, um, the photography competition. This started probably about, uh, this is our 20th year, but I think the, co the competition started about uh, 12, 13 years ago. And the idea behind it was um, to make our citizenry and the school system, the children and the students, um, to really look around and see the beauty that we have in our community. Sometimes you just drive by and you really don't take a look at all we have to offer. And I know all of you here know that, whether it be our landscapes, our historical structures, and so forth. So I want to thank um, anybody who's entered, but specifically uh, the Oliver Ames uh, students and uh, Kristen Shea, who's the art director at Oliver Ames throughout the school system. She was integral, integral, integral part of um, having the, the kids really go out and take some pictures and the fruits of their labor are shown and um, I think the biggest uh, part of this enjoyment for me is when I call a lot of the students, um, I get the parents on the phone and they say to me, you know, this has been such a blessing because it got my kids to put down their computers and laptops and so forth and they actually went around and as I had spoken earlier to see what a beautiful community we have uh, historically. Um, and it was something that they could do together. So uh, again, without further ado, uh, the first category we have, Richard, if you can come over with me too, please, um, is the historical beauty of Easton. And uh, first place is Eric Lothrop. Second place, Laurie Meritori Pires. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, third place again, Eric Lothrop. Congratulations. Historic Beauty of Easton, uh, honorable mention to uh, Charlie Hudson. Is Charlie here? And we have another honorable mention, Historic Beauty of Easton, honorable Robin Lee Tan. Don, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. I'm sorry. Historic Beauty of Easton, Honorable Jesse Barnett. Okay, uh, first place, Natural Beauty of Easton, Sydney O'Connor. Sydney actually took the, uh, the photograph at Easton Country Club. Actually, the owner. Uh, Mark Lombardi is very interested in the image, so talk before you leave, okay? Uh, Natural Beauty of Easton, second place, Charlie Hudson. Obviously, Charlie's not here at the moment. Okay. Third place, Emily Dion. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Heather Moorcock. Okay, so we have one more honorable mention, Joey Looney. Joey Looney.
Okay, the next category is the beauty of Easton through its people. Uh, in first place is Kirsten Chan. Okay, the next category uh, was chosen by our, our sponsor, uh, the Bank of Easton, and that category is pets. And that goes to first place, Laurie Meritori Pyres. And second place, presented to Sarah Cathy. Third place, Hannah Murphy. category of pets is Laurel Edis. And Bank of Eastern Pets, Hannah Hauser. to Abigail DeFrancesco. And last but not least, it's the first time we did this and the judges weren't sure. Um, um, based on creativity, no, it's based on creativity, we didn't have it in a certain category. So a special merit has been awarded to uh, Marsha Young. First time yeah. into the category, into uh, the competition. Yeah. So congratulations to all of you. And now I'll turn it back over to our chair. At the end, if all the photo winners could get together, we'd like to have a photograph of every all the award winners at, at the end. Uh-oh, it's glasses. <laughs> Ta-da. OK. Chafin and Briggs Award presentation. First up is the Chaffin Award presented for contributions to preservation of Easton's history. This year's recipient is Avery Lee Williams. I don't know if there's anybody here who doesn't know Avery Lee Williams. Avery is a great guy. Avery has dedicated so much time to the betterment of Easton. Through 4-H, uh, I imagine he was a JC, through the Lions Club, uh, he's involved with the town through CPCs and been involved in sheep pasture. Uh, those are huge. He has made huge time commitments. He just, it's phenomenal what he's, what he's done. He's also made many monetary donations to our historical properties. Uh, the hall, the library. He's responsible for the beautiful clock downtown on Main Street. Uh, he's a nonstop machine. Um, he's been a lifelong resident of Easton. And uh, he's, got, he's got a great life story. I don't know if he'll tell us his life story today or not, but uh, it, he's, he's an incredible guy. And uh, please welcome up Lee Williams. Thank you, Chairman Tim. Vice Chair John says on the CPA committee with me. And I want to say... Uh, Thanks to the Bank of Easton for a number of reasons. Not only their support, but they're one of the few things in town that's older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, my story starts this way. The name of the horse was Peanuts. He was older than I was in 1950 when I got hired at uh, Harker Watches and Poultry Farm. Not too much orchards there. Trees were there, but it was mostly chickens we were raising by the thousands. Peters was a nondescript brown Belgian uh, draft horse, and I got chosen to drive him for two reasons, I think. One, 
cheapest labor on the force at 75 cents an hour, and I could harness a draft horse. So I'm out there in the sun, and now I'm paying the price. You see, it's very serious cancer operations. For the overdose of sun I got, part of it was at Harco Orchards out there in the, what they call the range. The farm work I did was four summers. I wore three items of clothing, big broad spurs, uh, brimmed straw hat, uh, underpants, of course. They wouldn't be boxes because they would shown below the cutoff dungarees. We didn't have jeans or Levi's, you know, just the scissors and you cut them off. I was barefooted and burned right up, brown as a berry, looked healthy but uh, paying the price later here in life. I sit in front of a computer all day and I'm getting to be pretty good at it, but when I was a kid we didn't even have TV, of course. I'm coming up on 85 years of age, not as old as a bank, but I'm old. <laughs> and there have been a lot of changes in that time. The other day I even did some uh, cutting and pacing. I'm really getting up on this computer thing. <laughs> well, we all know that any 12-year-old kid in town can run circles around me on a computer, but they ain't no one of them can harness a draft horse. <laughs> 85 years is a long time and a lot of water under the dam, dam, as they'd say. But one thing has been here all that time, not one thing, but in collectively all these things. Our historic sites and our historic buildings. The Ames family left a lot of them to us and there were some other incidental ones and our job now is to protect them and preserve them. We're doing the best we can at it. But those buildings were there long before me, even as old as I am, just waiting for us to come along and pick up after the Ames family, one after another, not maintaining them for all kinds of different reasons. Some of them got turned over, as the way that great family has always done, to like Stonehill College or the Borderlands State Park or Sheep Pasture. I want to tell you we're indebted. We're I'm related to the Ames family, you know, not through the Williams line, but through the matriarchal side. It's in the early to mid-1700s twice. We were farmers, and the Ames family were uh, blacksmiths, chewing horses, you know. Big families then, you know, four kids, six kids, eight kids, who knows? And if statistically, half of them were male. They couldn't all shoe horses. There weren't enough horses to go around. So, some of them branched out a little bit. My family stayed farmers. They chose to do things with metal. Some of them made household utensils, and a few of them decided to make digging implements. Guess who made the better career choice? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I'm still here to talk about it. The importance of each one of us here can be described maybe in this poem. Sometime when you feel you're important, sometime when your ego's in bloom, sometime when you take it for granted you're the best uh, qualified in the room, sometime when you think that your going will fill an unfillable hole, just follow this simple example and see how it humbles your soul. Take a bucket and fill it with water. Put your hand in it up to the wrist. Pour it out in the hole that's remaining as a measure of how you'll be missed. Now you can splash all you please when you enter. You can stir up the water galore. But stop and you'll see in a moment it looks uh, just the same as before. Now the moral of this strange example is uh, just uh, do the best uh, that you can. Be proud of yourself, but remember... Uh, there is no indispensable man, or woman for that matter, 
No, you're not indispensable, and if I don't come down for breakfast tomorrow morning, you're going to find out that I'm not indispensable evening, even. But being not indispensable doesn't mean that you're not important. Collectively, the day after I'm gone, you're going to gather around without anyone saying anything about, oh, Williams is gone, and now we've all got together, because you're just going to do it naturally. Just as all of us, we're faced by those two inevitables, the income tax, and I won't talk about the other. I plan to be around another <laughs> decade and cause you all a lot more trouble. But there's things each one of us can do, and I want to ask you today, this is the group to do it. We've got treasures we've got to protect, and I want you, I daydream a lot. I want you to daydream, but I like to think of it as thinking. And I want you to be thinking about what you're going to do. You're not irreplaceable, but you are important. It doesn't happen if you don't see it in your mind first. You know about that. What are you going to do, you individually? Are you going to get to town meeting and support CPA when we're looking for funds for some historic restoration? Are you going to be in another organization that's going to raise some funds to do something else for our treasures in town? What are you going to do? We're going to try to get the town administrator and the finance committee and the board of selectmen put a little money in the budget for historic preservation? God forbid. Capital budget, there is one and see if we can do something beyond what we're doing in the CPA because we need millions of dollars. We don't have to come up with it all at once, and we're not able to, but we've got to be doing what we can do. Tim has given me a couple of minutes to talk to you about two things. One of them is the Eastern Legacy Fund. Under an umbrella, you've got some literature there you can read up. I'm not going to go into the, the bushes, the thickets, with the details of you. But it's under a 501c3, one-size-fits-all sort of thing, where different towns and parts of towns, Cuddy Hunk has got a big chunk of money in there, and they got a handful of people in there. They're pressing $40 million now in the thing. It got put together by... Uh, David Ames and his uh, henchman and brother, or his sidekick, Bill. Uh, Key person, he comes as close to being indispensable as we could have, <laughs> is that John Varela. He's out of the Loop clan, you know. He's done the pro bono work along with Doug Arico. We had Colleen Corona on for a while before she moved. Now we have Carolyn Cole on there. Getting a lot of help from uh, uh, Ken Michaels, of course. My son, Kevin, you wonder why he's not here. He's in the plane coming in from Puerto Rico after 10 days in the Western Caribbean. But otherwise, he'd be here. He and I and this crew have ponied up the first $100,000. We're going to be giving out a small award just to get this thing off the ground. We got it going, and we want to keep it going. And one of the things I'm asking you to do is get behind this thing and make it happen. Historical preservation is why we're in the room right here. This is an umbrella that can cover all kinds of related things and unrelated things that will help our hometown move forward. I want to see this thing be $20 million in the next decade. I plan to be around in, when I'm 95 years old see that we've done it. In any case, this is important. Learn about this. If you're in an organization that can do something, it can be ongoing. This doesn't mean that your organization, whether it's the library, the NRT, the Children's Museum, the Veterans Organization, whatever it is, doesn't keep doing the annual fundraising. Marion, you hear that? You keep right on raising the money because you've got to meet each year's budget. This is something separate and beyond. It's like when you go to church and they say, okay, you come in with a weekly contribution, but before you leave, leave something for the missions. You know what I mean? This one here will take on cash along the way as we're going, but what we're looking for to bring in the big bucks is estate planning. You want to leave some to the kids. 
lot of you didn't get a lot left to you, but you still want to leave some to the kids. Well, I'm telling you, as a financial planner, don't spoil them. <laughs> don't leave it all to them, okay? Slice off a little bit for the e ELF. ELF says elf. We want it to be a giant of an elf, like the giant in Jack and the Beanstalk. It's got to be big because we need this kind of help. Learn more about the ELF and do something about it. Get it into your daydreams, get it into your thoughts, make it happen. Second thing I want to mention to you is five years ago I set up a few bucks for the 2025 300th anniversary of the town. This is our history, you know. We got to do it up brown, as the expression has it. Got to be a good one, okay? We want a great parade. Well, the money we got there, talk the town treasurer a while ago, I think it's built up to about $16,000. You can't even hire the Shriners to come in for 16 grand. Today's money. If we're going to have three or four good marching bands, bands and we're going to have a cotillion ball, and we're going to have, you know, fireworks or whatever the committee comes up with, we got to get behind this. Send in a few bucks, if you will. If you're in an organization and they can spare a few dollars, talk them into it. Figure out in your daydreams how you're going to make something happen here too for us, for all of us. We've got a lot of treasures here to defend. There are two kinds of people on Earth today, just two kinds of people, no more, I say, not the bad and the good. For it is well understood that the good are half bad and the bad are half good. No, the two kinds of people on earth I mean are the people who lift and the people who lean. We're all lifters here. Let's get in there on the historic preservation cause and lift the bejazzes out of this thing. Thank you very much. Claire Cronin, Donnie Fulgenetti, please. Hold on. Hold on. So I think everybody can uh, see why Lee is one of the examples of the beauty of what we create in this town and the legacy, that it's just not all uh, our government, which is an integral part of everything we do, but it's people behind the scenes. And that's why he uh, was chosen for this award this year. Now remember, I'll take a look at my tie for you. <laughs> so, uh, congratulations to all the award winners today. This is a wonderful event every year. I always look forward to you, to coming here to be with you. And thank you uh, for sharing the history of Easton through the eyes and lens of your camera. So I appreciate that. But I also would like to, on behalf of the House of Representatives, Baby. and along with uh, my partner in government, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Dorothy Fulgenetti, uh, provide, She's the best. <laughs> <laughs> provide this citation to you, and it says, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Avery Lee Williams in recognition of your receiving the Chapin Award, Chapin Award uh, for making a significant difference in the historical present preservation of Easton. And the entire membership of the House extends its very best wishes and the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. And it is offered by me, your state representative, Claire Cronin, but signed by the Speaker of the House, Robert DeLeo. So congratulations. I humbly. Next up, Clement Briggs Award, presented 
preservation of Easton's historical landscape for act architectural integrity. First is Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> Alice McCarthy. Alice owns a property on 300 Center Street, beautiful original colonial with a beautiful barn out back. It's right where Summer Street comes out onto Center Street. Uh, Alice, how long have you had the house? When did you? Uh, 1799. But when, when did you move in? You didn't move oh, in. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. What year did you move in? I moved in in 1954. Wow. With my husband. Right. Charlie. Charlie, who's left us, was he and Alice were just a great uh, partnership, just wonderful people. So, Alice, we've got. Oh, you? Oh, my goodness. This is something that we've just started last year. It's supported by the Historic Society. They donate this for us for these houses. So, it's really neat. particularly all the people that are involved in historic preservation in Easton, is a, a historic property is a lot of responsibility for a private citizen. And I think, I don't think there were any houses in Easton that belong to the uh, town of the historic properties. No, I don't uh, there, know. Yeah. And it's, it's a big responsibility, uh, and there's a lot of pressure uh, on the homeowners, just ask me, and <laughs> I will be glad to tell you, but I promised John I wouldn't get on that soapbox. <laughs> but it is, uh, it, it's a lot of pressure, and, and uh, I hope that um, everybody appreciates uh, what the homeowner goes through, because you don't uh, just give away rights to the property, uh, and and uh, expect somebody else to take care of them and to see that they are enforced. And it, it, um, they need a lot of support. So I hope in the future uh, the Historic Commission will continue their hard work and um, uh, be supportive of the owner of the property. And uh, I thank you very much. Thank you, Alice. Yeah. And I'd like to also say, uh, uh, like Lee, Alice. Oh, what? what no, just I want to say also, um, like Lee, uh, Alice. Um, you know, some of you are way too young to, to know, but I've been in town for about 35 years, and even before I was in town, I had an interest uh, in, in this community through Borderland State Park. But uh, Alice was one of the ones that uh, she probably doesn't remember, but um, got my interest. Um, excitement about uh, the town of Easton and, and uh, it, the beauty of it. And so I thank you very much for that. And uh, again, you've done so much in your family through, uh, throughout the years that it's well, greatly appreciated. So, thank you. Thank you. Next up, Tamsin and Christopher Surjak, who own the property at 3032 Oliver Street. They purchased a home from the Ames family, they could tell you two, three years ago, whatever, but uh, they've done a magnificent job. Uh, there's a fun, I don't even know what the difference between restoration and preservation is, but whatever they did, it's beautiful. <laughs> they maintained as much of the outside as they could, uh, with original clapboards still in place, replaced um, non-functional shutters with beautiful functional shutters. It's just a wonderful job they've done. And it, uh, it's really a good example of what we hope 
people will do. Um, so along with them, our mem one of our members, Greg Strange, worked on that job tirelessly uh, through the design process and all the way through the finish. Uh, Greg's, Greg's a member of our commission. He's a member of uh, CPC. He's a member of the planning board. And with all those things, he really helps us bring together uh, a, a lot of good things. He, he will work on a project, you know, trying to show someone how they can change and not tear something down. That, that kills us every time something gets torn down. It's like having a tooth pulled. It's, it's awful. So Greg is integral in trying to get work with the homeowners to get things going. There's one on Center Street. You might notice on the right-hand side, uh, it's become a duplex. It's beautiful. It's, it's white with black. It's, it's, it'll be gorgeous when you're done. But anyhow, moving along here, the Surge Acts, please. Society for working with me on it. It was, um, as you noted, it can be very challenging as a homeowner to um, want to bring their home forward, um, yet maintain the historical value of the house. And that's something that uh, that took a lot of work together with the uh, historical society to um, or commission to um, to work with. There were examples of, if you know the home, it has four front doors. And uh, I was required to keep four front doors. Um, that wasn't easy to do when I wanted to also move the home forward into, uh, you know, 100 years and put a first floor bathroom, um, open up space so that there's room for larger furniture. All of that needed to happen, but I had to keep four front-facing <laughs> doors. Uh, the commission worked with Greg and I to um, come up with a plan that the doors didn't have to be real or functioning. So if you approach the house, you'll find two doors that have doorknobs and two that do not. And uh, don't try entering the two that do not because they're bathrooms. <laughs> um, so things like that, that we had challenges. Um, the historical commission was very helpful in working with me. There's also a new front window over the, the two doors that you may have noticed for the last hundred years, if you were around, or was not there. But there was a drawing from 1890, a map, um, hand drawing, that showed that there had been a window there. And I fought for this window. Uh, and the commission agreed that if I could find evidence that the window did exist, um, I could put it back. And lo and behold, we took the wall apart, and there it was, framed in. Uh, so it was not artistic license that this map person did back in the day. He was very careful to draw in actual windows. So now we have a beautiful center window over the two front doors, and it uh, changes the interior entirely. Uh, it made a big difference. So things like that. Um, Made, made a huge difference. And I would argue that any homeowner who is contemplating um, this sort of um, um, work on a, an historical home should feel that they will be welcomed with open arms and worked with, with the historical commission into making their dreams work as well. And now the house has modern heat pumps for heating and cooling. It is um, carbon its carbon footprint has, has been greatly diminished. We have spray foam insulation. We have modern um, plumbing electrical, including that first floor bathroom that was important so that people could live there long into their old age with a first floor bathroom and a room that can be used as a first floor bedroom. So the house on the exterior remains true to its heritage and its history, uh, much as it did 100 plus years ago. But the interior is um, modern and beautiful and uh, still shows signs of when it was a shovel factory. There, the ceiling has been sandblasted, so you can see the original post and beam construction. Um, 
and all the original uh, places where they had steel uh, levers to hold up whatever back in the day when it was a shovel factory. Um, all that is still there and exposed and it's really um, a beautiful place. And for uh, in the next hundred years, when it gets renovated, probably not by me, um, but they will find some treasures in it that I found because some, we found a couple dozen 1850 vintage well-worn shoes that have been replaced, hidden away in places in the house that um, will have to be totally renovated and ripped apart in order to find. So uh, they will be there to greet the next renovation when hopefully a long time from now will happen. Uh, so again, thank you to also to the Bank of Easton for financing the project. Um, and also a huge thanks to Greg Strange, who as an architect um, helped overcome a lot of the hurdles that you find when you're trying to bring an antique historic home uh, into, the, into the new century. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, on behalf of the House of Representatives, I won't read them all the way through because uh, we have a couple more, but on behalf of the House, uh, I just want to congratulate you for your receiving the award and for the wonderful preservation you have done uh, to enhance our time. Thank so you. congratulations. Thank you. Next up, Hazel Varela will tell us about the Boston Post Road King. Our recipient is a repeat recipient. Tufelia Bassett, who was unable to be here today. Maybe we'll make a presentation to her. Yes. So we've done it at the home. We've gone to the house before. But uh, please tell us about the cane, Hazel. Thank you. Okay. This is a replica of the Boston Post cane. It was sent to 400 different towns in New England in 1904, and it was to go to the oldest male <coughs> in the community. Easton lost the cane in the 1950s, somewhere, someplace. In 2002, it was identified the factory that made these. And so the Northeastern Savings Bank was interested in continuing the tradition. With the permission of the Historical Commission and the Select Board, it was voted that this came, actually the bank ordered five, just in case. <laughs> this happens to be the Historical Society's one that we're holding. But the idea was that it should go to the oldest person in Easton who had been here for at least 10 years. So since 2002, we have had 11 people, all women, who have heard this case. And if you're curious, there were two plaques back there that were bought by Dr. Robert and Carol Mesowitz, and it lists the 11 people. It also lists all the Briggs and Clement Awards. So it's something that you can usually find outside the town clerk's office. Last year, Mrs. Bassett, and her name's in the program, and I have trouble pronouncing it, she's called Aunt T. So I want to just tell you a little bit about Aunt T, who's now 99 years of age. She grew up in Bridgewater, 
married Phil Bassett. And Phil Bassett's mother, grandmother, had property here in Easton. And so the young couple were given 163 Turnpike Street. The only problem was it was a very, very old house. So they had it torn down. They saved the lumber and rebuilt. The cost, 1940s, early 40s, $1,700. <coughs> so the next time you go by Turnpike Street, 163, she's still there in the house that they rebuilt in the early 1940s. After the war, uh, two children, Jeff. Jeff actually is on the back property that's called Pine Street. So we basically have the Bassets on Pine Street and Turnpike Street. We have a number of people here who have been involved with the Flower Club, the Garden Club. And Mrs. Bassett was a member of that for years. And when you thought, went by her house, you could tell you wanted to slow down and you wanted to look at the beauty that Mrs. Bassett created in her front yard. If you could get to the backyard, even better, but uh, the beauty that this lady created. And so John and I will take the plaque that he has and we'll give it to her within the next few days. But we're honored. She has been here since the late 30s. She's still living alone at 99 years of age. May we all do that. Thank you, Hazel. Um, that concludes the program, but not without a couple more people I'd like to recognize. Uh, Carolyn Cole, the director of the Eastern Cultural Council. <laughs> Carolyn is a nonstop advocate for Easton. The, the things that she gets done and the, the funding she helps bring in on grant money is, is really muchly appreciated. Uh, Bill Ames, I saw Bill sneak in. Bill, thank you. <laughs> the library director, Uma Haramuth. Uh, thank you, Betty Williams, for allowing us, Lee Williams. <laughs> Uh, thanks again, Fred Ames in the hall, for uh, allowing us again to come up here. It's, uh, it's a great place to, to, to show off. Uh, thank you, Yvonne Ventresco, who sets this all up for us. Who... <laughs> who, for 20 years, has allowed John and his buddies to come in and look at these pictures soak up a bunch of wine and cheese. I know it's not easy, so thank you everyone, appreciate it. Um, in closing, please accept Lee's challenge to help preserve Easton. Thank you. One last thing too. We can have all the uh, recipients of the Briggs and Chaffin and also all the photo award winners, if you wouldn't mind, um, coming up here after a couple of photographs, just putting you down your name and addresses. Um, we'd like to send uh, a thank you out to you. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And, and again, thank you, thank you. That's it, thank you. So can we get all the, all the um, photo winners? The photo winners and the, uh, I think we got enough of the uh, Briggs for Chastain.
Right side. Up.